In this part of the presentation, we will focus on soil water retention, the calculation of the soil water balance, and the required soil physical parameters. So let's start with the soil water retention and first introduce you to the concept of field capacity. Water is retained in the soil because there are absorption forces and capillary forces. There is of course also gravitational forces which try to pull out the water. But if you are below a certain limit, which is called field capacity, at that moment the forces that retain the water in the soil are bigger than the gravitational forces. If you come above field capacity, the gravitational forces are larger and water will drain out of the soil by means of deep percolation. So the water content in the root zone at field capacity is given by 1000 times field capacity times the rooting depth. Theta field capacity is the volumetric soil water content at field capacity. If we have a sponge and we put it in a bucket of water, the sponge gets soaked. If I take it gently out of the bucket, water starts draining out of the sponge. And after a while, the drainage will stop. At that moment, the field capacity for the sponge is reached. Now, when there is less and less water in the soil, the remaining water becomes strongly attached to the soil matrix. The capillary and absorption forces become stronger and stronger. And at a certain moment, it is when I reach wilting point, at that moment, the forces are so strong that the roots can no longer take up water. And consequently, the crop will wilt. So this lower limit is called permanent wilting point. So and the water content at permanent wilting point is given by 1000 times theta z, where theta is the soil water content at the permanent wilting point. Since field capacity is the upper limit and permanent wilting point the lower limit, the totally available water is the water content in the root zone between field capacity and permanent wilting point. Water content above field capacity is not available for the crop since it will drain out of the root zone. Water below wilting point is so strongly attached to the soil matrix that it cannot be taken up by the crop. So tau is given as the amount of water between the water content at field capacity and permanent wilting point. Here you find some indicative values for the various texture classes. So if we look at the clay loam soil, the volumetric water content at field capacity is 39 volume percentage and at wilting point 23. So we can calculate the corresponding tau for a rooting depth of one meter, it will be 160 millimeters per meter. Loamly soils, they have a higher tau, 200, 250. While sandy soils with their low field capacity in wilting point has a small tau of less than 100. Clay soils with their high field capacity but also high wilting point have some intermediate values for tau. Let us return to our example of the clay loam soil. We are considering a root zone of 70 centimeters and we can calculate that the water content in the root zone is given by 1000 times theta times z. If the field capacity of my clay loam soil is 0.39 cubic meters of water per cubic meter of soil, 
Then the water content in the root zone at field capacity is 1000 times 0.39 times 0.7, which is 273 millimeters of water. So if the water content at permanent wilting point is 0.23 cubic meters of water per cubic meters of soil, the water content in the root zone at permanent wilting point will be 1000 times 0.23 times 0.7, which is 161 millimeters of water. A soil, a clay loam soil, with a rooting depth of 0.7 at permanent wilting point will still have 161 millimeters of water. Nevertheless, the crop will wilt because the water is so strongly attached to the soil matrix that the roots cannot take up that water. Let's continue with the calculation of the soil water balance. When calculating the soil water balance, we are going to keep track of the changes in the soil water content by considering all incoming and outgoing water fluxes. By expressing the water content in the root zone as an equivalent depth, the calculation becomes easy because rainfall, irrigation, transpiration, all these fluxes are also expressed as an equivalent depth, millimeters of water per day. The water content in the root zone at the next day, T plus 1, is equal to the water content in the root zone at time T, the previous day, plus the amount of water added by irrigation, rainfall, minus the water which was lost by runoff, plus the amount of water which moves up from the groundwater table to the root zone, capillary rise, minus the amount of water lost by evaporation, transpiration and depercolation. So the soil water content that can be expected at the end of the day is derived from the water content at the previous day and by considering all the incoming and outgoing fluxes over the concerned time period. From previous examples, we know that the water content in the root zone at sampling was 231 millimeters. The water content in the root zone at field capacity is 273 millimeters of water. We can calculate that the water content in the root zone at the next day time t plus 1 is the water content of the previous day, which was 231, plus the amount of water added by irrigation, 0, plus the amount of water added by rainfall, let's assume 10 millimeters, but we don't lose any water by runoff, plus the amount of water added by capillary rise, mean the amount of water lost by evaporation and transpiration, we put them together as ET, minus the amount of water lost by depercolation. So it is 236 minus depercolation. Now we know that depercolation will be in this case zero, since the amount of water, 236 millimeters, is below the water content at field capacity. Now if the next day we have some irrigation, then we can calculate that the water content at time t plus 2 is the water content at the previous day, 236, plus now the amount of water added by irrigation, let's assume 75 millimeters, plus rainfall minus runoff, all zero, plus capillary rise, zero, minus evapotranspiration, five, minus depercolation, 
this gives me 306 minus d percolation. Now, this time, the amount of water in the root zone is above field capacity, and that means that we will have to consider some d percolation. So we can calculate the d percolation as a difference between the water content at field capacity, 273, minus the water content at the end of the day, which is 306. So 33 millimeters have to be lost as d percolation. So the water content at the end of the day will be 306 minus the depercolation of 33, it gives me 273 millimeters, which is the water content in the root zone at field capacity. In aqua crop, we use the concept of root zone depletion, DR. DR is the shortage of water with reference to field capacity. So we can calculate dr as the water content in the root zone at field capacity minus the water content in the root zone. Root zone depletion is often used in irrigation since it refers to the amount of irrigation water that need to be applied to the soil in order to bring it back to field capacity. From the previous example, we know that the water content in the root zone at field capacity is 273 millimeters of water. The water content in the root zone at the moment of sampling was 231 millimeters of water. So the root zone depletion at that day was 273 minus 231, it is 42 millimeters of water. It means that there was a shortage of 42 millimeters. If we had irrigated 42 millimeters, then the water content would have been at field capacity. The water content in the root zone at the next day was 200 36 millimeters. Hence, the root zone depletion at that moment was 236 minus 273, it is 37 millimeters. Finally, the next day, with that heavy irrigation, we ended up at field capacity, 273, so the water content in the root zone at that day was zero millimeters because we are at field capacity. To conclude, let's look at the required soil physical characteristics required to calculate the soil water retention and soil water balance. They are the soil water content at saturation, field capacity and permanent wilting point. They will determine the total available water which is available in the root zone, the occurrence of water stress if the soil water content is close to wilting point, and water logging problems if the water content in the root zone is close to saturation. In a sandy soil with a low water content at field capacity and permanent wilting point, the total available water is rather small. Consequently, there is a high risk on water stress if we do not irrigate it frequently. On a loamy soil with a high field capacity and a relatively low permanent wilting point, we can store a lot of water in the root zone. In a clay soil, field capacity and permanent wilting point are relatively large. Consequently, we will have a moderate tau. Now, field capacity is close to saturation. This means that after heavy rainfall or irrigation, the water content might be a bit above field capacity and there are problems of aeration in the root zone. 
So to characterize the soil in aqua crop, we need just to specify the soil water content at field capacity, wilting point and saturation. However, we can distinguish different soil horizons up to five. And for each of those soil horizons, we need to specify what is the soil water content at saturation, field capacity and permanent wilting point.